Hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, we're really excited to get started, so I won't delay any longer. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so we can start uh, taking a look at a, you know, the portal first, as Julian mentioned, and then the Fortinet out of the box integrations. Okay, guys, so here we have our Lumu customer portal. Um, many of you are already pretty familiar with this portal environment, um, but the, for the purpose of this training, I really wanted to start, take a look at the incidents at what you can expect to see here, and then we'll move on to the uh, Fortinet integration that we're going to show step by step in just a second. Um, so just starting off, you know, when you log into your portal, again, you're going to see a high level overview of everything that's happening, you're going to see open incidents, you're going to see all of the endpoints that are affected, all very high level information, um, but today we'll focus a little bit more um, here on the incidents tab. So here in the incidents tab, there's a couple of incidents I kind of want to walk through and talk a little bit about before we get into the process of, of our integration, right? Um, so there's a couple of, of incidents here that I thought were pretty interesting, and I also want to show you a new reporting feature that we have. So um, the first one that I'm going to show you is uh, related to C to C. So it's a command and control. This is a malicious IP address. So this particular IP address um, is associated with malicious infrastructure. And it's just an example of another thing that you're going to be able to block um, with your FortiGate Fortinet integration. So you have here um, you know, a description of what this uh, IOC is associated with. So in this case, it's the malware family. Um, this is a command and control technique that they're using. Um, the status of this incident, um, it's open. It's been open for uh, some time now. Uh, the detections here, you can see the endpoints that are affected, the number of malicious contacts, and the labels. Remember, the labels allow you to customize and, and really prioritize incidents, seeing where in your organization exactly they're coming from. Um, and then below that, you can see details about the different endpoints that are affected and the contact that has taken place with this malicious IOC within your organization. So as you can see, um, this is when that malicious contact took place. This is when um, you know, they were in contact with adversarial infrastructure and all of this information. Um, you can click here to see more details about it to get some of the, uh, some of the additional data that we provide here from the threat feeds. Um, and then again, you can always download all of this information or export all of this information. And one of the new features, um, before we get into the other tabs here in the portal, one of the new features that we have here is actually the ability to email these reports to somebody outside of your organization. So with the incidents, with the malicious activity that's happening, you know, a lot of the time you want to share these findings with other people in your organization or perhaps a vendor, somebody else that you work with. Um, you know, whoever it might be, you may want to be able, you, you may want the ability to share, not only, you know, export the information for you or, or download, but you want to be able to share all of the details of this report with other people. And now one of the new features that we have is this email reporting feature. So you click here, um, you essentially enter the information of the individual that you want to send this report to. And then you can add a subject there and a comment. And you can send that email to your intended recipient. And what it does is it sends um, an email with all of the details associated with this incident to the intended recipient. You can also save this email for your future reference. You can ask them not to you know, ask you to save it again, um, or you can just not save for this time. So in this case, I'll just save the email. And I can just actually add this person as a recipient. Give them a title and click on save. So we added them as a recipient. We were able to save that email just for our records for later. So it's a really cool reporting feature, a really nice function that we have um, now in, in the portal and the ability to export that information and, and send that to other people so that they can, they can obtain that information. And now I'll show you what the email looks like and, and what people can expect to see there. So, you know, as you can see, um, you know, the email report has been shared with you. You're able to see some high level information about this specific incident. So the recipient of the email sees some, some general information here. Um, and then they can download the report uh, through a PDF. And through that PDF, you know, they're going to have all of the details that are in the other tabs that we'll just go through in, in just a minute. But just so you can see what the report looks like, you know, this is the kind of information that you can share um, you know, with others that, that want to see uh, what happened here and what this IOC is about. All of the links are functional so they can 
you know, download that information as well. Um, so it's really, really intuitive, but also really informational and helpful to anybody that may need um, this kind of information through the email report. So again, it's another feature. All of the information in this email report, all of it is going to be found um, in the other tabs of the of the of the portal. So next, we'll move on to the um, highlights tab. So in the highlights tab, you just have some general information about you know how long it's been open, what area of the business it's affecting as it pertains to labels, you know where where we're seeing the majority of that activity taking place how the you know attack um it's just kind of different ways to see the contact different ways to visualize that um so with the compromise radar just seeing the frequency of contact the same the same thing with attack distribution you know throughout your organization how it's you know spread if that if that's the case um and if there's spam box data that will be included as well the other thing that we have is our threat intelligence tab um and so this is where you have information related to those IOCs. You can have, you know, just a little bit more context around uh, what it is that, that you saw there. You also have some related resources. You have different, um, you know, whether it's articles or uh, blogs, whatever it is that can give you extra context about this IOC. It'll help you understand the intention. It'll help you understand what's happening and why. So, you know, there's a lot, a lot of context around these detail, uh, around these incidents. So we can give you as much detail as possible so you can respond accordingly. And you've probably seen these, you know, the, the out, uh, incident response playbooks. Each incident has its own incident response playbook. So it helps you really narrow down um, your mitigation efforts or remediation efforts, whatever it is that you need to do, there's some recommended actions here on top of, you know, the resources that we provide external resources and such. Um, but generally speaking, you know, what we'll look, what we'll look at in a little bit is you can automate the response to that and really won't have to worry about it going forward. Same thing, you know, more context here with the MITRE attack matrix, you can see the different techniques and protocols that are used by this specific IOC. So you can get a better understanding of, of what you can expect there end of what's happening. And all of this is related to the MITRE attack matrix, highlighting that specific technique so that you can understand it well. So that is, is what the incidents look like. Um, I'll show you one more um, that, I, that I also think to be pretty, pretty interesting. Um, it's related to, let me find it here. All right, so this uh, this other incident here is related to uh, Sodinokibi, which is a very well-known um, malware family, generally associated with uh, ransomware. Um, so again, you see the general information about the IOC. This one this one has you know more information in it. So this particular IOC, you know, this particular IOC here, what you're seeing with with this activity is that there is more contact across the organization. It's impacting more people. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's spreading more than the other example that we showed. So this incident is going to have different information in here and different context around what's happening. Um, so you can see the different endpoints that it's affecting, the different endpoints that are in contact with this IOC. You can see them all here. You can click on an endpoint to see the frequency in which they've contacted the IOC. Again, all of that can be downloaded. All of this can be emailed in that same report with that same level of detail for this particular incident. So you can have that PDF on hand if you ever need it or if you ever want to share it with, with somebody else. Um, but you can also export the information for your own records as well. Now, again, in the highlights tab, this is a different incident. This one is related to C2C and to malware. So you're going to have different information here. There's also more contact across your organization. So you're going to see different areas of the business affected here. It's a little bit different than the other one. The attack is distributed differently in the organization. You, you have it affecting operations, an unlabeled area. You also have it affecting you know, the development team. And so you can see how that's spreading across your organization. As you scroll in and you scroll out, you can see the attack distribution there. The other thing that we have here is the compromise radar, which shows you, again, in this example, there's a lot more contact happening. So you can see the frequency in which um, this person's been in contact with that IOC and how it's happening, how it's spreading across the organization. And in this case, we also have spam box data. So you can see 
um, different emails that maybe contain links or whatever the case might be that are associated with this incident. And it seems that there were a lot of emails sent uh, related to this particular IOC. And you can access that information here with uh, the spam box information. Then under threat intelligence, we also have um, you know, threat triggers here, which just a little bit more information about the IOC and a description of that malware family um, related files. In this case, we do have hash files, so you can download those and, and reference them if you ever need to. Related resources, again, as much information in articles or blogs or whatever it is that we can provide you with uh, so that you can take action against those, those IOCs or understand really what's happening. Um, Really, in this case, what, what we would ideally do is, is integrate Fortinet so we can automate that response, which we'll do in just a second. But if anything else, you know, you have all of the information you need. Um, you can always come in here, reference, understand what's going on. But um, the thing that we're going to move on to next is the integration with Fortinet. So we're going to walk you through sort of the step by step process of what that involves so that, you know, everything that you're seeing with these incidents, it's really informative. It's, you know, of course, you want to pay attention to that. Um, we provide you all the context that you need, but we also provide you the ability to automate responses to these IOCs, to you know these malicious um, sites and IP addresses, and you're able to do that through our Fortinet integration, um, Fortinet out of the box integration. So you'll see it's fairly straightforward to to set that up. All right, so here you can see all of your available integrations and we're going to configure a response integration. So we'll click on response and we're going to go down to Fortigate. So we're going to click on add here. And now you see, you know, your Fortigate, Fortigate screen. It gives you some information about it. Um, and just something to keep in mind is that once you add this integration, um, it's gonna update it with the adversaries detected in the last 30 days. So anything detected in the last 30 days will be added to your IOC list. Now, let's go ahead and activate, give it a description here. So we can go my Fortigate integration. Now, next thing you're gonna wanna do is select the different threat types that you want to include in that blocking process right so you know you probably want to include them all but you have the choice to include some so you can go malware c to c spam um you can go with phishing crypto mining um you know you can also remove them if you want but again that's totally up to you you can add remove and just configure this according to your needs really um the other thing that you can do here um, another feature that we have with Fort Fortigate here is that you can generate um, automatically a block list of IP addresses as well. So in addition to the URLs, just the way that it's configured with Fortinet, you have to select if you also want to generate a block list of IP addresses, of malicious IPs. So we'll click Create. And now what you see here is you have an integration ID, you have your domains and URL, um link so this first one is going to be specifically to um, activate that domain and url threat feed now the second link that you have there is the ip addresses field so you're going to be able to have two different links here for two different purposes the first one is going to be to block those domains and urls and the second one is going to be to block do, uh, ip addresses so for fortinet it's just you have two links there so just keep these um, in mind, copy paste them somewhere so that you can have them for your records for when you start the configuration process. So make sure you have them handy along the way. So now what we're gonna do is access our FortiGate firewall environment and log in. Enter your username and password. Um, can set this up later. Now, just for reference, we're operating on 40 gate version 720. So that is the current uh, version that we're operating on here for this example. And the first thing that we're going to do is access our security fabric tab. 
Now with that security fabric tab, we go to external connectors. Click there. And now what we're gonna do is add a new external collector. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna activate that domains and URL list. And where the, the section where you do that is here where it says 40 guard ca category. So again, we go ahead, give it a name. And then also copy our URL. Now let's just, let's name it. Now we put the URL of the, that was provided in the portal. And then for HTTP, we don't really need that. So we can deactivate that. And then the refresh rate, um, we generally recommend 30 minutes. It's up to your organization, but this is um, sort of best practice. But again, according to your needs really. Um, in the comment there, you can just kind of put the same as the name for now, for this example, um, and the status, we want to make sure that's enabled. So we leave that green, we leave that as it is, as you see it there. And then we select OK. And now that you've created this, you can see that your threat feed is created. Now, the only thing is that you have that uh, red X, it takes a couple of seconds to update. Um, but it, you know, just give it a couple of seconds so that the status uh, changes to a green check mark eventually. Um, but now, when you click on the threat feed there, okay, as we can see, the connection status is now in real time. Um, we can see, you know, our category that we created. We can see the the threat feed. We can also see the entries. We can see all of the IOCs that have been imported. So it's most likely that these are the ones from the last thirty days. You know, as as I mentioned earlier in the portal. You can scroll through and see all of the different uh, URLs in the threat feed. Uh, you can see the different domains, URLs. And so that's where you can really reference and cross-reference that information. Now, moving on, we're also going to have to create an IP list. So, because remember those two were separate, we had the two kind of separate protocols there. Um, so what we'll do is click on IP addresses here. Now that we're here, we'll give it a name. We'll also get our URL from the portal. So we're gonna copy, copy that. And we're gonna go ahead and paste it in here. And HTTP, again, we can go ahead and disable that. And then we're gonna set this time to 30 minutes as well so that we're the same. Uh, for comments, again, we can just enter the same name as uh, the name we gave it and click on okay. So now we have both of our threat feeds there. Same thing with IPs. We check on the status here. Um, it's taking a couple of seconds to activate there, but as you can see, the you know, um, you know, the connection status is slowly updating. We'll give it a couple seconds, and it looks like we have two valid entries. So we can always refresh it. You know, if you want to see that green check mark show up, you can always click on refresh there and you see that we're valid, we're up to date and those IP addresses have been imported. Same thing, you can take a look at them. You can see, you know, what is there and cross-reference what Lumu imported. And same thing with the URLs. So essentially what we're going to do next is add these feeds to um, different uh, policies. So that's going to be the next step that we're going to do into the firewall to be able to take action now that we have our threat feed set up. So we'll go to security profiles and web uh, web filter. So we're going to start there with the URLs and domains one. Now, in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and access a existing profile. You can create a new one, but that just depends on, on your organization and, and your needs. Um, if you already have a profile, that you're actively using and, and that's the one that you want to add it to that's the example we're going to show here we're going to click on the lumu web profile click on edit and we're going to go ahead and see here that we have that that category that new category we click on it and now once we've selected it we click on block we're going to make sure that we block connections with those urls and with anything um that comes through that threat feed. So we click on OK. 
And now that's been added to our Lumu web profile. And let's keep that web profile in mind. Now, when we create, we're gonna be creating firewall policies. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the firewall policy tab under policy and objects here. Now we're gonna click on the firewall rules that we have here. So we have this LAN outside one. Um, this is the one we're gonna go ahead and edit. And this is where we will add web filter. So you'll move the toggle button there and then click on the drop down and access Lumu web profile. So that's again the profile that we just created to block everything from that threat feed in the firewall. Click on OK. And that has been added. That has been added to that firewall policy. And now you have protection from those uh, malicious, you know, IOCs with URLs and domains. So we have that now set up in our firewall profile. And this is a one-time configuration um, with, the, with the profile. Once you've done it once, uh, you don't need to you know, update it again. You're, you're set to go going forward and you don't have to worry you know, about that uh, contact taking place going forward. So we'll go back to our external connectors and that's where you're, you, know, you can find your threat feed. Everything is, is set up for that one. Now, next thing we'll do is configure the IPs. So that's the next step is adding the rule to block those IP addresses. So we'll go ahead and go to policy and objects, and we're gonna have to create a new one in this case. So for the IPs, to block the IPs, we create new, we name it, we put the uh, enforcement, okay. Now we're gonna select the incoming interface and the outgoing interface. For this case, the source, and we're going to select all. And here for destination, we're going to collect uh, Lumu IPs. So we're going to select Lumu IPs in this case. Now for the action, it's really important that you keep in mind we want to deny so that we block that activity. And then under comments, we can put you know whatever you'd like to put there. We'll just keep the same as the name for right now. And the policy is enabled. You click on OK. Oh, well, missed one step. And we click on All for service as well. And OK. And there we are. So now both policies are set into place. You don't have to worry about you know, any of your end users connecting to um, any of those malicious URLs, any of those malicious IP addresses, you know, at this point, you're all set to go. So all of that adversarial activity, everything that we reviewed in the portal here, right? All of that is taken care of at this point by Fortinet. You no longer need to worry about that. Um, and, and you're really set to go. All right, and one more thing, guys, uh, before I stop sharing my screen and we get into the questions, if you guys have any questions or need any help um, configuring things, um, you need any support, just remember that you can always reference the, uh, the, the question mark there at the bottom of the portal. You can search through our documentation. We have a ton, a ton of information about deploying and integrating. Um, but if you ever need anything, our support team is here to help 24-7. You can always submit a support ticket, um, and, and we're here to help.